All right, everyone. Tonight's lecture is part one in a series of the different gas laws that we're going to be learning in chapter 12. As you can probably guess, we have uh, four main variables that you read about when you read and outlined chapter 12. But in case you weren't sure or you didn't catch on, uh, here's the list. Please make sure you copy down this list because you are held responsible for knowing this. We use capital P for pressure, capital T for temperature. Please note, for our gas laws, we must use the Kelvin temperature scale. Therefore, any time we're given degrees Celsius, we have to convert to Kelvin. I have written here the conversion to Kelvin again, even though we learned it in the first semester. I'm sure you tried very hard to remember, but probably forgot. We use capital V for volume, and we use lowercase n for the number of moles of a particular gas. Keep that in mind when we get to this law that uses moles, because sometimes we may have to do conversions between grams and moles. Boyle's law is the law that you investigated in stations one and six for the uh, lab quest and the Cartesian diver. When you did these two stations, you realized that when pressure goes up for a gas, its volume goes down. And when pressure goes down, its volume goes up. We call this an inverse relationship. Robert Boyle studied this exact same principle in 1662. And he's the one who came up with the law. And we call it Boyle's law. It's very important to know the equation for Boyle's law. Boyle's law is P1V1 equals P2V2. As you read in chapter 12, there's a whole bunch of math that goes beyond or goes into all of this. Um, suffice it to say, for a sample of gas, if you take a particular pressure and volume and multiply it, and then you take a different pressure and volume for that same gas and multiply those two sets of data, you should get the same answer. So if you look at your data in station one, pick any two of those points and multiply the pressure and the volume, you should get the same answer. This is how we can set one set of data equal to the other set of data. Please keep in mind, the units do not matter for pressure or, or the volume as long as they're the same. So we can be in kilopascal or atmospheres, we can be in milliliters, cubic meters, uh, liters. Uh, it doesn't matter what the unit is as long as we use the same on both sides. Also, you need to be careful. When you're reading problems, they may switch units on you and you have to pay attention to this. Please take a moment and copy down this example. Okay, the best way to solve gas law problems is to create a list of variables as you go along so that you can recognize which law you're going to need. I'm going to do this as we read through this problem. A sample of hydrogen has a volume, here's a volume, okay, that volume is equal to 97.0 liters and a pressure of 3.4 atmospheres. What is its pressure, uh-oh, so this was our first pressure, and now we want to know what happens to the pressure if the volume, uh-oh, here comes the second volume, increases to 156 liters. So that first volume will have to change to volume one. In taking a look here, we see that we have Boyle's Law. The pressure and the volume are changing. So in order to solve this, we write out the law, P1, V1, equals P2 V2, you always want to start out with the basic law. Now this uh, is an algebraic equation and we can solve. We need to know P2, so we divide by V2. So P2 is equal to P1 V1 over V2. Now we can plug and chug. I'm going to shrink this down just a hair. Okay, so our P1 is, oops, 
3.4 atmospheres times our 97.0 liters divided by 156 liters. Liters cancels out. We're left with atmospheres. This is fantastic because we're looking for pressure. When we calculate, you should get a value of 2.1 atmospheres. And this is Boyle's Law. How can they make this more difficult? They can switch the units on you. That's it. The other law that we're going to look at tonight is Charles' Law. Charles' Law was demonstrated to you in stations two and three with the can and the flask with the balloon. You discovered in these two stations that as temperature of a gas increases, its volume increases. And as temperature of the gas decreases, its volume decreases. We call this a direct relationship or a direct proportion. In 1787, Jacques Charles, who is a French scientist, discovered this exact same principle. So he gets credited for the law. It tells us that for a fixed amount of gas, the volume of a gas increases as temperature increases and vice versa. Now, because this is a direct proportion, the equation is set up as a proportion. You guys are going to like Charles' law. Keep in mind, temperature must be in Kelvin. Please write this down and make sure that you have it because you are held responsible for knowing the equation. Again, please take a moment and copy down this example in its entirety. All right, let's take a look. We're going to create another list of variables just like we did in the first example for Boyle's Law. If 355 milliliters of water vapor, there's a volume, 355 milliliters, is at 125 degrees C, there's a temperature. It gets cooled to a second temperature. Okay, so this is our first temperature. Here's our second temperature, 2 degrees C. Uh, what's the new volume? Uh-oh, here comes a new volume that we want to know, which means our first volume was volume 1. Because we're only talking about volume and temperature and they're changing, we know that this is a Charles' Law problem. It's very important for you to be able to distinguish which law you need to use for each problem you run into because they will get mixed up. Now, we are dealing with temperature, so we have to convert temperature to Kelvin. So we have to add 273 to each of our temperatures. When we do this here for our 125, we get 398 Kelvin, and we get 275 Kelvin for our second temperature. Oops, 273 here, excuse me, 275 Kelvin. All right, now we have our list of variables. We'll set those off to the side. And now we can go about solving the problem. You always start off with the equation. Uh-oh, hang on one second, I wanna change colors. V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2. This becomes a plug and chug type of a problem because this is a proportion. So we literally just type in what we, or write in what we've got. 355 milliliters divided by 398 Kelvin as some other volume is going to be 2, 275 Kelvin. Now, we cross multiply and divide whenever we have a proportion. Depending on your level of algebra, you can go straight to that. Or if you're not that strong, you have to show a little bit more work. I'm changing the color to green. This is an optional portion depending on your strength of algebra. When you cross multiply going this way and you multiply 355, 355 milliliters times 275 Kelvin, you're going to get 97,625 milliliters times Kelvin. When you cross multiply the opposite direction, you get 398 Kelvin times V2. To solve for V2, you divide by 398 Kelvin on both sides. Now, if your algebra was strong enough, you could have just done this from the proportion and the green uh, written part is not necessary. If your algebra is weaker, you need to do the green part. 
So when we complete our calculation, our final volume of this sample of gas is going to be 245 milliliters. This is everything that we're doing tonight. I hope you have a wonderful night, and we'll work on some problems in class tomorrow. Have a good one.